Welcome to Photoshop Chapter 2, Part B. We left off, um, it got a little long-winded with the color corrections, the cropping. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to show you a set of panel um, of tools, the healing, the spot healing, and the patch. They used to all be under each other in one clip, but... So these are things that you would do to improve the quality. If you look in, um, if this was going to go to print for something, magazine cover or travel magazine, you would go in and use the rubber stamp, the cloning stamp. Use that. Um, there's also the pattern stamp tool. It's very much like a inkwell or a paid or past due stamp that you would... Um, this conceptually people struggle with this a bit. Um, you, the stamper is actually like a rubber stamp and then you dip that into an inkwell. So your inkwell is option, click, and this target point. So here is an area that's nice and clean, blue. I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to scrub over what I wanna cover up. So there's just an example. Now here, I don't want to do that because then I'm going to get his hair, right? So I'm going to reset my point, my target point. Option, click. And then I've got the new thing. Also, when you're doing covering lots of areas of things, you want to start selecting from different source points um, so that your eye cannot detect a repeating pattern because the human eye will start to see a pattern there when you start messing with pixels. The other thing you could do in an area like this is do spot healing. I'm going to set my brush, it's at 19 right now. I always say with a soft edge, if you look at your panels here, um, this is just a default for that brush, but if you were in the rubber stamp, you would see you have sets of brushes here. You can always append, that's a rename, apologies, just add in sets. Like I added in my square brushes. You could go ahead and add in these. Always press append, not okay, because it will replace it with the new set if you just say okay. But in this case, it's added on different types of brushes. And my setting and my preferences so that you can see the actual size of the brush in relationship to the um, DPI of your photo and how closely you're zoomed in on your photo. Um, that is in your preferences. Cursors. I always have mine precise. And you show the normal size brush tip so that when you hover, it's there. See, now I have my crosshairs. I actually hadn't reset that since I downloaded um, Creative Cloud. <clears throat> so we'll go back to a regular brush. I just wanted to show you those very quickly. Um, so use a soft edge because a hard edge is going to give you these lines. And you see there, you can notice that. Any, anything to give the eyes and don't don't let the eye trip over anything so don't don't set it up for it to recognize a pattern that's part of the artistry of um, of retouching so the other cool thing that they show here not something I use professionally that much because it can get a little bit um, observable but if you come in around this boy and this is a lasso, a loose lasso tool. Come in close to his um, shadow. Oh, and my setting is on content aware up in the upper panel, and it's on structure four. That becomes a marching ant or marquee. <clears throat> now I'm going to move that, and you'll see content from another area which doesn't have a person chose and you say command D or select D select because you don't want to adjust that pattern again let's see if we can do that over here where we rotated instead of having to clone this area out where I would normally manually do that 
let's just try staying close. I'm being very sloppy, that's why when I use the lasso tool, I usually use the polygonal lasso, not the freehand, because it's very difficult. Now go back to your move tool, or home base, home plate, as I say, and let's move that. That didn't work. Oh, because I'm not in my patch tool, my bad, sorry. Move that over. Okay, so that zipped up that end there. Now you're noticing, again, anything that the repeats, the eye will catch, because there's only certain circumstances. There is some types of marble where you do have repeating pattern. Um, but in this case, let's go ahead, get a smaller brush, because I was going a little bonkers just showing you those. Something a little smaller. Go ahead here. I'm back in my cloning tool, aka rubber stamp. And I'm going to just tuck these little things here that repeat. Right there. And you can get really in depth with this. I'm not going to sit here and do this. I'm just sort of showing you how some of these tools work. You would go in here, it's called sewing together. So just as you would manually sew pieces of fabric together, get rid of these seams. There's a little black dot. Even if that black dot is there twice, if it got repeated accidentally, just clone it out. You establish a sort of truth in the environment of what you're seeing. So people know there is a, so you can clone this. People know that there is a folded photo, right? But also we're not focusing on that flaw. We're trying to get rid of the flaw. That's the whole idea of, you know, models get retouched all their flaws away. But in cases of sewing things together, and you would go in here and just completely clone these out or patch them, however you want to approach it, whatever works. But in the end, these are all of our different cloning techniques. And that's it for chapter two. Going to grayscale, you can follow those. I will do something in a presentation with some best practices for grayscales and how to fix those levels once you get there. Okay, great.